Within this lesson, we will be solving division problems with remainders using the area model. Let's take a look at the problem 58 divided by 3. And we are going to take a part to whole by place value approach. Just as we did when it is that we are dividing without a remainder. So here's a 3. Here's what we don't know. And then let's start with the tens, where we look at those five tens and we're dividing by three. We know we can actually get ten there with the three, so that we have thirty of the fifty-eight. What's remaining there? Well, we have twenty-eight remaining. So the closest that we can get to twenty-eight with the with the ones there and twenty-eight divided by three is 9, because 9 times 3 is 27. So what we have here that we have divided then is 57, 30 and 27 put together, and when we put together 10 and 9, that's our quotient, 19, except there's a remainder, and a remainder of 1. Fifty-seven and one does give us the fifty-eight that we were dividing, and we we're dividing it by three. Supporting this with the long division, here's fifty-eight. Here's the three that we're dividing by. We start with the five tens, and when we divide by three, we do get that one, because one times three is three, and five minus three is two. That's why we had the 1, 10 right here, and that's also why we have 27 here, because this 2 is going to get regrouped with the 8. And when we divided 28 by 3, we got 9, because 9 times 3 is 27, and 28 minus 27 is 1. So our remainder is 1. That length of the unknown side is 19, and there is one square unit remaining. Let's try another problem. Here we have 58 and we're dividing by 4. What should the total area be? Right, it should be 58. What should the width be? Right, it's what we're dividing by, which is 4. So we're trying to figure that out. We're not sure what it is. And we can't put 58 in there this time. Because we know that there's going to be a remainder. There's nothing times 4 that will give us 58 directly. So that's why we're breaking it apart. We start with the tens place. There's five tens, and we do divide up by 4. We do get 10, because 10 times 4 is 40. That leaves us with 18. And when we divide 18 by 4, we get... 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. 40 and 16 is what we put right here. 40 plus 16 is, right, 56. I'm going to label it this time. Remember, we're talking about an area model, so it is square units. And this right here for our quotient is equal to 10 plus 4, which is 14. There is a remainder, though, because we were dividing 58. How many square units are remaining? Right, we needed 58 total, so there's actually two more square units there. Two more square units remaining. And we also draw that within our model that we were decomposing and breaking it apart. Showing our division work and our long division to support our work here. 4 goes into 5 how many whole times? Right, once, because 1 times 4 is 4, and 5 minus 4 is 1. We bring down the 8. 18 divided by 4 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16, and 18 minus 16 is 2. Make sure to record your remainder, not only in the long division, but also within your area model.
read that whole equation with me. 58 divided by 4 is equal to 14 remainder 2. Okay, it's your turn to try. Go ahead and draw the area model first, and then also show the long division to support your work. Pause the video while you do your work. Remember, you are dividing by 5. You might have come up with a different way to break this apart and break this down. I would have chosen 10 to be able to look at 50 here, to break this apart into 50 and, well, it'd be 37. 37 divided by 5 is 7 because 7 times 5 is 35. So I have 85. And how many more? How many square units would be remaining? Right, there'd be two. There'd be two square units remaining there. And then so we draw that within our area model here as well. So with, from our area model, the quotient is 10 and 7, which is 17. And the remainder is 2. Let's show our long division work to support our response. 5 goes into 8 tens one whole time because 1 times 5 is 5, 8 minus 5 is 3. We bring down the 7. We take those 37 ones and when we divide by 5, we get 7 because 7 times 5 is 35 and 37 minus 35 is 2. 2 is our remainder. So that unknown side length that we had solved for was 17, and our remainder, and those square units that were left over, was 2. Let me show you one more example where we're looking at 53 divided by 2, not only with an area model, but we'll also write out our work to show how it is that this is broken apart and to show that we have solved the problem correctly. So when we start with the 53 divided by 2, our width is 2. Our length, whoops, we don't know that yet, and then we also don't know how much the remainder is going to be. When we decompose it, we look at that 5 first, and when we divide 5 by 2, we get 2 and two tens in particular. So that is worth 20. 20 times 2 is 40. And then so the remaining part of this is 12. Because it would have been 13, but 13 divided by 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12. Our remaining little part here is 1, because 13 is not divisible by that divisor of 2. So the area here is the same as here. 40 and 12 is 52, and our remainder is 1. Our missing side here is 20 and 6 put together, which is 26, which is also our quotient. So 20, 53 divided by 2 is 26 with that remainder of 1. Remember, these are square units here because we are talking about area, just as both of these would be square units as well even the one there. Now let's look at our written work to go ahead and support our answer. What we took was 53 and we divided it by 2. When we broke it apart, we had 40 and we also had 12. Here's 40. We were dividing by 2 to find that missing side length. We'll add that together to 12 and we'll also divide 12 by 2. This will give us our quotient. 40 divided by 2 is 20, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 20 and 6 is 26. And that was that missing side length, that is our quotient. And we did have a remainder of 1 unit. So that's how it is that we use the area model when we have remainders.